what's happening ladies and germs this is the packer man and welcome to today's edition of all elite review uh, where today we're going to be reviewing the uh, anniversary show from this past wednesday uh on um what is it? that's october the 14th 2020 uh running a little bit behind so let's go ahead and get into this uh all four championships were on the line this week uh the first one was for the tag team championship between best friends and ftr I uh, had a lot of great wrestling, particularly in FTR's uh, case where they had a lot of isolation wrestling. Um, there were some risky moves like uh, Trent getting hit with an avalanche back suplex by Dax. Um, Chuck would get the hot tag and go to town on F FTR. He would hit a falcon arrow on Dax. Uh, FTR had a nice double team pop up power bomb and a gory bomb on Trent. Only got a two count though. Uh, then they started trading like tornado DDTs and shit like that. Uh, Best Friends actually hit Strong Zero on Dax, but Cash came in with the breakup. Uh, Cash hit a Brain Buster on Chuck. Um, Trent hit a drop kick on Cash. Uh, and then Cash dodged uh, Trent's spear attempt, which sent Trent through the arcade cabinet that was at ringside, uh, which was uh, Miro's, which we'll get to that in a minute. Um, but eventually FTR hits uh, Chuck with the belt uh, to get the three count and the victory. So basically the heel way to win. Uh, I gave this match 3.75 stars out of five. Uh, afterwards Miro comes out and lays waste to best friends for destroying his arcade cabinet. And the next match featured uh, Miro and Kip Sabian in a tag match against Lee Johnson and Sean Maluda basically showcasing uh, Miro's dominance. Uh, this was a lot better the, um, match than the previous one that Miro was in, where it was kind of messy. But in this case, it just showcased Miro's just absolute power, in this case. Manhandling both Johnson and Maluda. Uh, he eventually locks on the game over. Camel clutch on Maluda for the submission win. Basically a squash match. I gave it one and a half stars. Uh, afterwards, Miro basically says, You break my shit. Game's over. Uh, then they go backstage where they uh, show Archer attacking Moxley backstage and uh, there'll be more to this uh, coming up in a second. And then MJF and Y2J kind of go through their usual spiel, you know, where they say, you want to join the uh, inner circle, you know, and all that stuff. And I guess they're going to have some kind of, like, dinner or some shit next week this coming Wednesday night. I don't really know what that's all about, but I guess we'll find out. Um, and then there was a segment with Britt Baker at a pedicure with uh, Tony Schiavone and I guess they were like waxing his chest and shit like that. So uh, that's pretty funny I guess. And then the next match was probably the match of the night. Uh, the TNT Championship match between Orange Cassidy and Cody. Uh, there was great mat, ra mat wrestling between the two. Cody with a suplex but also sells the damage to his neck. From the dog collar match he also had like tape on uh, his neck. To kind of sell the damage. Cody hit a layout uppercut. Orange came back with a super kick. Um, Orange countered a crossroads into a victory roll for a two count. He, he hit a stun dog millionaire. Then Cody gave, came back with a Cody cutter. Uh, then Cody starts focusing on the leg after a low drop kick. He hits a disaster kick and an inverted superplex. Both for two counts. Orange had a diving DDT for a two count. Also, Dark Water tried to interfere uh, during this match, but they were thrown out by the referees. Um, Orange Cassidy hits a, hits a Michinoku driver for a two count. Uh, Cody locks in the figure four, but uh, Orange rolls to the apron where he hits a beach break, basically the air raid crash on the apron. Then he hits a satellite DDT and a beach break only gets a two count. Uh, the time limit basically came into play at this point and Orange hits the mousetrap, but runs out of time. And the timing of this was actually pretty well done by the referee where uh, he, his hand was coming down for three but then the bell rang and he stopped signifying that time had expired so this match was a time limit draw um, kind of let you know kind of there to let you know that uh, time limit draws are still in AEW and they still enforce them even if they're not on a regular basis um, so they'll probably so I, they said they were going to settle this uh, two weeks from now um, I'm guessing a 60 minute TNT title match and whoever is the champion at full gear will be facing off with Darby Allen for the championship. So that'd be interesting. Uh, I gave this TNT title match four and a half stars out of five. It was a damn good match. Great storytelling. 
Uh, and then Moxley attacks Archer backstage while he was in the middle of an interview. So this basically led to them being in a no disqualification match for the world title in the main event. Uh, Shivani interviews Matt Hardy, who was at ringside, but is interrupted by Sammy Guevara, who says that this is not over until Matt Hardy is put on the shelf for good. So evidently, uh, they didn't really like how, you know, the feud was supposed to end, I guess, at um, All Out. And they basically revealed that Guevara was the one who attacked uh, Matt Hardy, uh, who basically attacked his knee, if you remember, a couple weeks ago. Um, so I don't know how the hell they're going to um, finally finish off this feud because I think it's just been going on a little bit too long at this point. I mean, All Out was supposed to be like the blow off, but of course Matt got injured uh, after taking that scary uh, bump off the high rise so I don't know how the hell they're going to end this feud but they need to end it because I mean these two have been going at it and you know a lot of the stuff they have been doing has been resulting in them getting injured unnecessarily so I don't know what they're going to come up with for that though uh, next up they had a lottery to determine uh, four teams who will compete in a fatal four-way tag match to determine who will face FTR for the tag team titles at full gear it will either be Private Party, uh, Beaver Boys, which is John Silver and Alex Reynolds, which actually got a huge pop from the crowd because um, their performances on Being the Elite have been really popular as of late, especially John Silver's. Uh, the Butcher and the Blade and The Young Bucks. Um, in this case, uh, Smart Money would probably be Private Party um, because even though The Young Bucks are in this match, I don't expect them to win. Because I think they're going to let uh, this uh, little thing simmer for a little bit longer. I think they're going to wait for a crowd to be allowed back in the arena. It's like a big crowd. Um, before they finally pull the trigger on FTR and Young Bucks. Because, I mean, that's a match that's been kind of brewing for years now. If you've been watching Being the Elite. So, um, Smart Money says to be your boys. I don't think it's going to be Butchering the Blade. Because then it would be Heel Team versus Heel Team. Um, so I don't know if they would go that direction. So Smart Money is either going to be Private Party or Beaver, Beaver Boys. Although I think it might be Private Party. But we'll have to wait and see. And then the Young Bucks basically super kick everybody that they're facing next week. So there's that. Uh, next up was uh, the AEW Women's World Championship match between Big Swole and Hikaru Shida. This one was a little bit clunky but it also had some pretty good moves. Uh, they both start trying all sorts of different pens to start the match. Sheeta hit a running knee strike and an outside barricade. Uh, Swole hits two step-through cutters, one on a ramp and one in the ring for a two count. Sheeta actually hit, hit a straight jacket suplex, which wasn't all that clean, but got a two count. Hit a Falcon Arrow for a two count. Swole actually hit her dirty dancing finisher, but Sheeta grabs the ropes. And she, come back, she comes back and hits the Tamashe uh, knee strike for the three count and the victory. Bit of a clunky match. Um, I gave this match 2.75 stars out of 5. And then we had the main event, which was the AEW World Championship No Disqualification Match. Um, I mean, honestly, this didn't feel as crazy as their Texas Death Match in New Japan. But uh, this is still a pretty good world title match. Uh, Moxley started out by hearing a paradigm shift right off the bat for a two count. Uh, both start brawling on the outside. Archer hits a pounce and a somersault plancha, which... You wouldn't expect a man of that size to be able to do that, but here we, here we are. Uh, Archer hits a big boot. Uh, Moxley hits a nice rebound German suplex and launches a chair at Lance, <laughs> which looked good. Archer hits a nice choke slam onto two chairs that were set up for a two count. Uh, Moxley locks in a knee bar. Um, they both go onto the apron where there are two tables actually set up on the outside. Um, Archer was trying to, I guess, try to do his own... Uh, a death Rider through the tables when Moxley hit a low blow and hits a Death Rider onto the two tables. Then he hits another Death Rider in the ring for a two count, but uh, Lance kicks out. So Moxley transitions into a Bulldog, into the Bulldog choke, but Archer fights to his feet and hits a DDT and then actually hits the blackout, but uh, kind of nonchalantly covers Moxley, which allows Moxley to counter into a Crucifix with a three count in the victory. So your winner and still champion is John Moxley. I give this match four stars out of five. So basically all four champions um, 
held onto their belts and I'm pretty sure everybody's like, well, why would they do that? Why would they not have a title change? Probably because there's a pay-per-view coming up. Full gear is not that far away. Uh, afterwards, Lance Archer attacks uh, Moxley and then uh, Eddie Kingston's group uh, goes into the ring and runs Archer off. Uh, Eddie Kingston basically sees his praises with Moxley but then attacks him from behind. So it's pretty obvious that uh, there's going to be another... Uh, Probably another match between Moxley and Kingston, and it's probably going to be like one of them fucking, you know, no holds barred type of matches, like the one we saw last year with Kenny Omega and Moxley, uh, probably for the world title as well. So that'll be that. And that was your anniversary show for AEW Dynamite. It was a pretty good show overall. Um, nothing like super mind blowing, but I mean, in my opinion, it was still I think a good show overall. So. Uh, my final rating for this show, I'll give it a 7 out of 10. So, it was another very good watchable show. Um, and that's going to do it for this edition of All Elite Review. Uh, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, this is the Packer Man signing out. See you later. You better like and subscribe or face the consequences. You have been warned.